Welcome back to Business Week here on Horizon News. We're tackling one of the most pressing issues facing Africa's growing tech ecosystem. That's bridging the gender gap in the tech space. Africa is, of course, in the midst of a digital revolution with countries like Nigeria leading the charge. Tech hubs are springing up across the continent and tech companies are driving innovation in sectors like finance, health, education and logistics. But despite this growth, there's a glaring gap women are still significantly underrepresented in the industry. According to the International Telecommunications Union, only about 30% of Africa's tech workforce is made up of women and even fewer occupy leadership roles. In Nigeria, this gap is particularly stark. While the tech sector is one of the fastest growing industries, cultural barriers, educational disparities, and a lack of mentorship and role models are keeping many women from pursuing careers in tech. This isn't just a gender equality issue, it's also an economic one. Research shows that companies with higher gender diversity are 35% more likely to outperform their competitors, making inclusion critical to the future success of Nigeria and Africa's tech ecosystem. Today, we're joined by two exceptional leaders in the field to discuss how we can overcome those barriers. First, Adora Unwojo, a multi-award winning software engineer and founder of Nexa Skill, an edtech nonprofit providing simulated work experience to over 10,000 young people. She's passionate about cloud and emerging technologies and has a first class degree in computer science from the University of Lagos and an MSc from the Georgia Institute of Technology. She has a strong software engineering found, uh, background and is the author of the popular book, Cloud Engineering for Beginners. With us, of course, from the previous segment is Lawrence Amadi, partner and head of tech assurance at KPMG Nigeria. Welcome again to the show, Lawrence, and great to have you for the first time, I believe, on Business Week. Yes. Adora, great Thank to you. have you. So let's start with your experience. What do you think are the biggest barriers women face in the tech industry from your perspective? Uh, I think the first thing is the bias. There's this bias. Like even I remember back when I was in secondary school and you asked me, okay, what do you want to be? And I said, I want to be a programmer. And everyone's like, oh, programmer. programming is a man's course. Um, <laughs> programming is a man's, you know, career path. Computer science is a man's course. Engineering is a man's course. And I'm like, I don't really remember anybody stamping gender on which courses you mm -hmm. could or couldn't do, right? But that bias sort of like starts from there. And then you see, you know, men tilting towards certain career paths. You see women tilting mm. towards certain career paths. And it's like sometimes even when you're when you're telling people that, okay, this is what you want to do, you're kind of shamed for wanting okay. to do that. Right? So it's a consistent thing that has been happening in society over time. And there's now just sort of like a way people think. Right. And if you are seeing doing something that is outside of what everyone else is doing, then most times there's something wrong with you. So that's the first okay. problem before we even start to talk about, you know, the fact that some schools, I've been to some schools because with my nonprofit as well, we tend to visit some secondary schools that have like young girls and talk to them about STEM, right? Mm. So I've been to some schools where there's no funding, they don't even have computers or a computer lab or even electricity to start with. Sure. So when we when we finish tackling the bias problem, which has now sort of affected, the then we deal with the funding and all the yeah. other And things. you certainly shame the critics critics because you got a first class degree in computer yes. science, which, <laughs> which is phenomenal. And I know you've been to Stanford as well to do some courses. Mm -hmm. you, you have an MSc for Georgia Tech. But looking at your journey, because you started in Niger, your degree in Niger, and then you went on abroad to do your further degrees. Did you notice a difference in the receptivity to women in tech? Or did you notice that there was an increase in the numbers in the classroom versus when you did your first degree in tech in computer science at Unilag? Mm, well, yes. So quick correction, I'm doing the oh, second you're doing, degree. You're yeah. doing your second it's not, degree. It's not Apologies, done. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's online and mm. I like to go to school online because it well, helps you're me tech. Like, I mean. you know, <laughs> work and school at the same time. Yeah. But yeah, there's a difference, right? When I was in Unilag, um, most of the people that were studying, most of the girls that were studying computer science got there by mistake. Like they thought it was something else. Oh, yeah. And then they got oh, there really? and then they realized, oh wait, we're going to write code. Oh my goodness, I don't want to be here. And even the people that got there by mistake were less than 20% of the class. Okay. Right. So that's one thing. And then being in Georgia Tech right now, it's still not so great. I'm mm. going to be very honest. Um, but the few people that I have interacted with and seen, it's like I'm seeing 
more women mm. than I saw when I was in Nila sure. doing my degree as well. Sure. But even for both schools, we're still not there yet. Okay, well, hopefully things change. So, Lawrence, I want to come to you from, you know, you're a man in tech, tech assurance, which is even another level of it as well. But from a corporate context, what are some of the things, the challenges you think women face breaking into that tech space? Even once they're out of, of uni, they're out of their education, they're now into work. And from a man's perspective, Okay, uh, thanks, uh, Rolake. I think when I listen to Adora's perspective on uh, the mindset, uh, you know, the bias, mm -hmm. I think the, in her words, the bias, I think they, they've got to find a way to, uh, you know, f break those biases. How? And it starts with the self. Okay. Uh, if, I, if I look at what we do in the firm, uh, leadership-wise, we are over 35% women in mm -hmm. leadership. Um, and I think we, we, th those numbers are going to get better because I see we're, we're getting in more ladies from the bottom. Okay. So if you look at our new intakes and if I look at my team, uh, I'm, I'm now struggling to find the guys. So 10 people come through, mm. seven girls, three guys, you know, it starts sending a message. It just tells you that the girls are, you know, they're solid in STEM. The ladies, yeah. Or the ladies. Mm. And, and they're really, you know, just upping their game. Right. And... I think we, we, the men, have to also then look for ways to promote, uh, you know, their growth in the organization. Uh, not necessarily put any preference, mm -hmm. but we know ladies or women have to go through certain cycles in life. Okay. Uh, you know, so uh, maternity sets in sometimes, and you've got to just consider mm -hmm. those things, put proper uh, policies around those things to, to enable them to thrive. Sure. And that's why we're seeing a lot more female leaders today. And, you know, to our clients, the message is consistent. You, mm. you, you, you need to, if you don't promote the, the ladies coming through in mm. the ranks, you know, so, something goes wrong with even your innovation culture, uh, you know, your entire strategic drive, something goes wrong with it. Absolutely. So, so women are so crucial. So as a, as a tech leader in KPMG, have you actually seen the impact on the innovation culture from a diverse team? Because we often say this and we talk about those figures about how more inclusive companies outperform. But in terms of your day-to-day -day business, how is that shaping your innovation culture? Um, today, mm. I've got some global uh, innovation challenge mm. led by ladies in my team. Right. And, you know, kudos to the, 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 the dexterity mm. and, and the efforts they put into just getting this thing done, you know. I've got no choice but to keep promoting yeah. the mindset, promote that culture. Uh, you know, it's got to be a level playing field. Absolutely. Every single time, you know, no single bias. Yeah. Uh, you know, because sometimes you go to some organizations, there's a boys club. Right. And there's a boys club that are going drinking mm -hmm. after work. Yeah, and that's where they're cutting the deals. And that's, and where, that's where things, you know, had. happen. Yeah. But, you know, in today's world, you've mm -hmm. got to move completely from that. Okay. You know, because... Ladies actually bring, you know, tons of value. Yeah. And they, they bring color to the thinking. Mm. Uh, because sometimes you could be running and uh, so it, it just could feel directionless Absolutely. sometimes. Yeah. And, and you need this, this yeah. touch. Uh, you Thank, know, thanks to, for saying to, that to and thanks for leading from the front. So I want to ask you now about Nexus Skill. Tell us about the model of what you're doing and how it's contributing to that diversity in the tech space and skills development. Um, so we're doing a couple of things that are tech community broad, right? Okay. And then we're also doing things for women as well as very young girls. Um, one thing that we're going forward into, like from next year, is even to focus a lot more on young girls, increase the focus on the young girls. Because there's a thing of like, catching them when they're younger, it's easier. Right. Um, I got introduced to computers when I was six. That's probably why I'm here today. Mm -hmm. If I was if I was introduced to something else, I may be doing a something different career different. path. Yeah. Right. I've gone to schools where I ask young girls, what do you want to be? They'll say things like, oh, I want to be a doctor. And I asked this young girl, OK, you want to be a doctor? Who's your role model? And mm -hmm. she mentioned a celebrity that is a singer. And that just didn't add up. Right. So it's important that they have that. They have people to look up to. They have mentors, they have people that they can say, okay, these are people I look up to, um, these are sort of like my role models in that sense, and I'm going to model my life, you know, mm. the way they've done that, right? And that's one thing that Nexus Scale is trying to do, 
in the next year for these young girls. Yeah. But we also have Nexus scale women within the community. So even be beyond the broad Nexus scale community that has all the things for you know the hackathons that we do, the mentorship programs that we run, and the apprenticeship programs that we run, we also have that safe space for women. They've come up with like a bunch of different programs, teach us women where they teach each other, where they vent to each other, where they share resources and share, mm. you know, jobs as well and things like that. So there's a more closer knit community within the broader community where women are just able to share with one another and help each other. But yeah. then apart from that, we're also doing things for the girls. So if you look at specific areas like coding and software, you know, some of the really niche areas of technology, which are have been historically very male dominated, are there specific strategies for women, young women, young professionals, you know, young girls who are ambitious and aspiring to break into those areas out of interest? Because in order to even take an interest beyond just general computer science in those specific areas, you have to be plugged into the right circles. Yeah. So what were some of the strategies you employed as you built your career to go into those very niche technology? I don't aspects? know if anyone should take the strategies I employed, but the first strategy was stubbornness. Um, okay. I did not listen to what anybody told me. Um, I knew exactly what I wanted to do, and I did it. And I remember even... According to my father, he wanted me to read computer engineering because he's like, okay, since so you want to do this computer thing, at least do the one that has engineering. And I said, no, it's science <laughs> because I felt like I had done my research. Yeah. I wanted to write code and I wanted to understand the fundamentals of how computers work. Like everyone is talking about AI today and there's a buzz around chat GPT. And I'm like, Mm, yeah, it's neural what networks. What is the back end? It's like, hey, it's neural yeah. networks, it's machine learning. Like, we know this Because things, you right? know that. Stuff. Yeah, because yeah. I studied the fundamentals, and that's one thing I wanted to do, mm. right? So, the first strategy for me, maybe you can call it being stubborn or being strong willed, but if it's something that you want to do, unapologetically do it. Right. And support systems are also very important, communities are important. They are amazing. Apart from Nexus Scale Women, mm. there are other amazing female communities in Nigeria. There's WeTech, there's She Code Africa, there's Fem Code Africa, there are, there's um, Cyber Girls for people that are just doing cyber security. There's a lot, so you can even just find that Finish. community mm. and tap into that because there you get support, there you get people that are doing the same things that you are doing. And you can be peer mentored as well because you would find like minds in those sorts of spaces. I think another thing is leveraging like online resources. Um, it's going to be easier for you to, like, as a woman, right, mm. if, if you already have, like, what, whatever job or whatever it is, school or anything else that you're working on, even if you're just at home, maybe, like, a stay-at-home stay mom, if you can use, you know, these online resources to teach yourself as well as leveraging these communities or maybe going to school like me and doing, like, an online master's or something in a way that you can sort of, like, plan your learning around your life, okay. right? It makes it a lot easier for you mm. as well. That's great advice, by the way, Adora. So I, I want to ask both of you a question. You know, one of the things that we talk about in tech is the ethics of AI, the ethical side. And there's also been controversies around the world from the machine learning about inbuilt biases within those technologies. Like if you ask a chatbot a question, maybe around race or religion or gender, it throws up a certain pre-programmed answer. So can you tell us about how the ethics of these new technologies will impact women and how we can even use those technologies to then promote more diversity? I don't, I don't know if you want to. So uh, certainly we'll give a good, uh, a first start. Uh, it's what we call trusted. Uh, trusted. Yes. Okay. So it is a whole you know, new concept within uh, the AI world uh, mm. because again, artificial intelligence gave birth to uh, you know, the generative, uh, you know, artificial intelligence, sure. you know, which we all call Gen AI. Um, like Adora has mentioned, the, the bias originally would mm. have been a lot of guys who probably were just sitting in basements basement and writing codes and, and giving it the, the, the feel. Uh, but when you also look at the large language models, uh, certain, uh, you know, things are ascribed to, to sexes, you know, mm. countries, places, uh, you know, maybe objects, you know, sometimes they could ascribe she mm -hmm. uh, to them. Uh, and I think when this coding happens, uh, those large language models, they, they tend to just also pull from, you know, surrounding, mm. uh, you know, data sources around them. Um, so I would 
it, and personal view. Yeah. It's kind of, it, it feels a bit flatter because when you see most global references, it tends to favor the ladies. Mm -hmm. Global uh, references know. now, because we live in a more diverse, people are talking Correct. about it more, so there's a more deliberate yes. effort. Yes, and, okay. and it's going in that direction, and I think it absolutely should. Mm. Uh, because again, uh, if I give this, a South Africa example, when I lived in South Africa, um, during the apartheid period, the ladies were, you know, the most disadvantaged uh, people. Mm. Uh, post, uh, you know, apartheid, the laws changed, and if you were to be black economic empower, uh, empowerment compliant, mm -hmm. you need minimum 30% women leadership right. to be compliant. So, so I think globally, you, you, see, you start seeing some of the shifts uh, in, in mindsets, you know, just promoting uh, the, the, girl, the girl programmer, the girl coder, and the girl developer. Yeah, so do you have any thoughts on that? Have you come across those biases in building the actual technologies? Um, yes, and I feel like I stress AI a lot. I'm always no, asking no, but like, let's hear it the annoying AI, questions. AI is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was even posting something on my, I posted something on my Twitter yesterday, and I, I think another one two days ago of me stressing AI. My followers are like, give ChatGPT a break. Okay. Because I'm always asking these questions, and it starts to hallucinate and doesn't give me the right answers. Mm. But yes, the truth is, AI is as smart as you make it. Right. Right. Every single thing AI knows is based on data that you've given it that it has learned from mm. so if we don't have you know diversity in the data then there's going to be bias in the responses in the, in the that results, it gives you yeah and i just want to say something especially even for people that are trying to earn there are many roles right now where you don't even need to code to get involved in ai yeah. you can literally just train these ai models right there are many roles on the internet you can train them in programming you can train them in current affairs. You can train them in different things, like mm. they're different questions. So basically, depending on maybe this, the part of the role you get, you might get the part of the role that is sort of like giving possible prompts that AI should learn to answer. Yeah. And then you might get the part of the role that is answering those prompts. Or sometimes it could be both, right? Um, you can get into those sorts of things. I feel like if AI, there's nothing like, oh, AI is coming. AI is here and AI is not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's that disruptive technology that we can say is not going anywhere, right? Um, it's going to be part of our lives at mm -hmm. some point and it's going to evolve the way we do a lot of things that we do. So it's important for everyone to get involved so that we don't know demographic or no gender or nothing like that dominates or you know feels left out in a sense yeah. so it's important to be part of those conversations build the ai in some way or at least contribute to the people yeah that are building the and AI. that that makes sense because i've noticed a huge leaning there's a huge anglo-saxon bias on a lot of the ai or machine learning algorithms. So if you're trying to find specific information on Africa, on Nigeria, even historic information, it's very light. But if you ask it about Ottoman Empire, or if you ask it about the British Empire, then you get a lot more feedback. So that's also a reflection of the diversity of people who are programming and coding and using those things and building those systems. And so I think you make a really great point. If you now look at the full spectrum of you know, the new technologies, AI, robotics, cloud computing, Web3, what else? I, you know, you know the names. <laughs> oh, are there setting areas or niches that you feel that are still predominantly locked out to women and why? Um, you've done very well with software, with coding, but are there areas along that spectrum that you think women still seem to be struggling to get into and, and why? Maybe globally, not necessarily specific to Nigeria. Um... I would say one, and I would say one is extended reality. Extended, what, what is yeah, extended so reality? When, when you think um, AR, VR, you know, okay. augmented reality, virtual reality, that space of being able to exist in a virtual world. Okay. Like, I don't really know many people that are building collaborative, at least I know some guys, at least. I don't know many women that mm. are building collaborative software in mixed reality where you know people can come together and collaborate and do things where your VR headset let's go right um, I think the cloud has become more open okay recently I'm seeing more you know DevOps engineers cloud engineers I think web3 is pretty open as well I see a lot of maybe not blockchain developers but I see like web3 community managers and okay. they're women and the thing about technology is that there are so many roles like the roles are so 
diverse. I was having and they a conversation. They don't all have to be technical. They don't all have really. to be technical. I was having a conversation with one of my friends yesterday, and this is someone that is doing marketing, right? And I'm like, ah, you are doing marketing, and you want to come into tech. Have you considered, I don't know, tech marketing, right? Like the role that you're currently doing, possibly even has the exact same role just in a tech company. So. Um, if you are someone that is good with marketing or community management, try and do it in a company that is, you know, a cloud company like a Cloudflare or a Microsoft. And you'd see that because you're now interacting with technology daily, mm. you become a tech person over time, right. right? Because I feel like at some point, most of all the companies in the world are going to have to become tech companies if they want to stay ultimately, yeah. um, you know, on top of their game, right? So I would say right now, that area, that field that I'm not seeing as many women as I would love to see is that XR, you know, AR, yeah. VR space? ER, no. Yeah. E well, AR, X because of extended. Oh, so okay, X. not ER, X. Yeah, so it's extended. XR. Okay. Yeah, um, but cloud is the one that I know that I'm seeing more um, women in. I can't say, I can't really say anything around like quantum computing and aerospace for now because they are still relatively new thing, so we don't know what's happening there. Mm. So let's, w and I don't even think Nigeria is the market for that yeah, at the moment. Yeah. We need to solve some problems before we Indeed. start thinking about going to space. And speaking of solving problems, from a government policy regulatory perspective, seeing what the Minister of Digital Economy has done, are there any areas that you would, as a young woman in tech leading in this space, would want to recommend to the public sector, the policymakers to do to encourage more women in tech? Um, I think one thing that we need to do is go to schools, right? Because like I said the whole thing about catching yeah, them young, sure. right? Go to schools, introduce STEM early enough, and possibly in a way that is even gamified. Because for a lot of people... It's boring. It's boring. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. I don't want it. Right? Mm. So do it in a way that gets people more interested. We need... I'm not really a policy person. I don't really know how to, you know, speak sure. policy English. But I'm sure that we also need policies around, you know, helping young girls or empowering schools or, you know, all these different kinds of things. And we also need to build applications as well for our markets. Because mm. most times, most of the things that we use, most of the apps that we use, apart from fintech apps, mm. most of the apps that we use are apps that everyone else is using yeah. and gave us, yeah. right? So it's important for us to also use technology to build. Imagine if we had like AI that could be like a teacher, a peer programmer to women and stuff like that. It would yeah. definitely help them learn better and be more Fant interested. Fantastic, great, great. Start, start them young. Lawrence, as a male leader uh, in this world, what, what, what task can we give you, really? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah. To help us, people like Adora, along this journey. So um, first, uh, you know, you're preaching to the converted. OK. So I'm, I'm very much on board with having the world, uh, you know, flatter. Mm -hmm. uh, and also enabling the girl child have the advantage and the necessary drive, you know, towards just con contributing to mm. the digital world. Mm. Um, a lot has probably happened this, this past week. Yeah. And I think we shouldn't lose sight of it. It was customer service week. International, uh, so international child. Yeah, you know, and, and all of that. And I probably just say, uh, when you also look at the, the average child using computing services, uh, we, we, we need to ensure their safety. Okay. And we've got to talk about that That's as well. That's a whole nother area Yes, we've got to talk about it. Because, again, we see a lot of kids mm -hmm. who all play uh, Roblox, yeah. which is very common now. Mm -hmm. But you don't know who is on the other side. Absolutely. And it's important that we start paying attention to yeah. so we don't get pedophiles, you know, get into our kids. Yeah. You know, but overall, the girl child must embrace them. And I think, I, I mean, I advise one or two boards mm -hmm. uh, on, on just pushing robotics, AI, and, you know, and the computing uh, conversation. Bringing the girl child on board early on, uh, like Adora has mentioned, Absolutely. spot on. Fantastic conversation, Lawrence Amadi, head of tech assurance at KPMG Nigeria, and Adora Wood, founder of Nextscale, and software engineer, multiple award-winning <laughs> software engineer. You've been so fantastic. Thank you so much Thank for coming you. on the show. Thank you. <laughs>